this is one way you can interact with your students. And I just wanted to see, I know several of you were at the workshop yesterday, so you have been in the breakout room before. So if you've ever been in a Zoom meeting and been put in a breakout room, if you will just answer this poll, polling question that came up. Is everybody seeing that? Okay, great. Okay, it doesn't look like on my end, just one second. I'm not seeing people responding, that's strange. Huh, so that didn't work like planned. It did yesterday in a session, as you can see, this says zero, zero. Let me try one more time. It actually flashed on my screen for a second, Erica. Okay, hmm. that's never happened to me before. Mine too, so it let's... just showed and then it just disappeared. Uh, we let's answered try... yeah. Let's try that again. Is anybody seeing it this time? Yes. Great. Ooh. I'm not seeing the anything. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Uh, huh. maybe I, I think I, for some reason, I when I, you know, there it is, I, it came back. I must have clicked on something that made, made me leave the, the session. So I'm going to, there now, but I want to submit my, there. Okay. It's back. And it's, yeah, it's still not show. Usually on my end, it starts to show me what, what, how people are responding as we go. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I did preload this beforehand. So we'll give up on that for today. Like I said, that usually is a neat feature that I like to show people, but it is not um, really, really doing it today. So just show of hands, maybe just. Sure, how many people, that's a great, yeah, that's a low tech way. And I, I do that with students sometimes. And I also sometimes have people hold up pieces of paper. So if you've been in a breakout room before, um, why don't you go ahead and raise your hand and, oh, great. There looks like there's a few people there. Awesome. I also wanna spend a little bit of time orienting people to the different features here today. So um, at the bottom, you will have kind of a, a, a menu bar and you can, you'll see a participant panel that you can click and it'll pop out a chat panel and, and that will come out there. You can see that you can mute and unmute yourself over on the side here. Um, you can also rename yourself. And I would like everybody to try that right now. You go over to the participant panel and you, you click either more um, and then rename. And if you'll do, if you'll rename yourself with a number before your name, one through seven maybe. And I'll show you right now, you should see mine came up as one Erica Brooks Hurst. So you can pick any number one through seven and put that at the front of your name. This is one easy way to quickly sort students if you weren't able to um, preload them into groups. Um, you, be, you being able to see what group they've renamed themselves into when we get to sorting students, that's a quick kind of uh, lower tech way to get those people uh, categorized into groups when you're assigning them. And that'll make more sense here in a little bit. Um, so yes, Curtis? I have a question, Erica. So that's in the, I click on the participants button. Yep, so if you click the participant, it should pop out a participant panel for you. Yeah. And once that panel comes out, you should be able to find your name and there should be a mute and then uh, a down. Okay, so it's on my name. More. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Yep. Uh, okay, so, yeah, I got it. Yeah, so please stop me like that if you're not being able to do it. We're really going to be trying to practice these things and do them today. Um, and so that is a quick way just to have people rename themselves. It could be also a way that you just interact with your students more. Maybe on that first day you ask them to, to change their name um, and put their favorite color at the end or something that, again, we've used this technology where we feel really far away and try and do something to make make everybody feel closer. Another thing that I like to tell students when I'm giving presentations and to my workshop participants, if you can have your camera on, like many of you do, that's great and that helps me. I can see you then, um, I can know if we're on the same page. If you can't have your camera on, I understand that, but that does help us interact. Also, it helps if everybody will remain muted unless they're talking, that helps cut back on background noise. So you can mute and unmute yourself. And I'm and and actually as um, the host, I can ask you to unmute if if I need you to to do something. But I would prefer if you manage your own muting today. So 
If you have a question, please unmute yourself. But if you'll remain muted other than that, it just helps a little bit on that background noise. So we've talked about chat. There's also, some of you may have this reaction here at the bottom on your, and, and mine has just updated to have other emojis that it did not have the other day. It used to just have the thumbs up and the clap. And I tell people in participant, uh, when they're participating in workshops, if you can find that and do that, that helps me to know you're with me at different times. This could also be something you have your students do. If you'll also turn your attention to the participant panel, you will see over there that there is a yes, no, go slow, go fast, and more. So if you wanna go over there and click one of those, just so I can see that you do know that how those work, and on my end, I'm seeing like a green check mark, if that's what you indicated. Under more, um, there are other things. So this is, again, a way that you could, you could designate all of these things to mean, you know, an answer to a question. Or you could say, hey, these first few days, I'm going to ask you some yes, no's, and I, and, I, and I want you to respond to me in those ways. Does everybody find that in the participant panel? So there's kind of two places for emojis or ways to interact. Jody, you're shaking your head no. Did you not find the? I did not. I'll keep looking. Okay. It may be so at so the it, top somewhere. So no, it'll be, so wherever you changed your name, if you were able to do that, the participant panel, it's down at the bottom of that where the list is and it's got green yes, no, go faster, go slower, more, and then clear all. Like I was able just to clear all. So that may just be on my end. So keep looking for that. If you if you if you don't find it, we can I can do a screenshot in a little bit and show people where that is. And also, if you're joining from an iPad or an iPhone, those may be a little different too. And I'll show you those perspectives here in just a second as well. So I I um, oh another important thing over there where I can unmute you and I'm the host. I can also remove a participant from. Um, from the session. I'm not going to do that today. But this is a great thing to know about doing when you're the host. So that if you had somebody who at the beginning of all of this, people were having Zoom bombing, you can go there and you can remove people. I have my settings within in the Zoom settings set up where if I remove somebody from a session, they cannot come back in. Because I would never be removing anybody unless they were doing something that I did not think was appropriate for the classroom. So that you can also within your settings, um, just so you know, and sometimes these are going in and logging on um, to your to to the web settings. So I'm going to show you what that looks like real quick. Um, this means logging on here to your zoom, like all of these settings and going through these settings here. There are a ton of them. So if you want people to share virtual backgrounds, Sometimes you have to enable the breakout rooms here. If you want participants to be able to privately chat with one another, um, some people take this, this one right here off where they don't want people to have one-on-one -on -one private chat separate from the group. So it just depends on, there's a ton of settings within Zoom. So making sure that you go here and look at those there um, under when you log in here and then look at your settings here. That's just important to note because we, we won't be going over all of those settings today, but there are a lot there. Yeah. Um, Curtis, did you have a question? Yeah, so when you change those settings around, does that then stay for like the next Zoom meeting that you have? Yes. And yes. would it be and the same thing then, like you just asked us to change our names. If I didn't change it back or remove that number, would I? Would that number appear in the next Zoom meeting I have? If this was a reoccurring meeting and you were coming in from the same email address, is how I understand it. So if how you, if you're coming in from the app and not the web, so that's mm -hmm. the thing about a lot of these programs is there's a web and then there's an app. So if you were signed in, that's how you'll come in. Yes, but if we're not reoccurring and it's a different meeting every time, that will look different. Okay. So that's something, and those those there are some settings within a meeting that you will want to, um, to, to set up each time depending, and I'll show you those real quick here. Um, so here, like I did this test. So once a meeting is created, so I scheduled and I did a test meeting here today. If you click this, you will see different settings here as well. 
And if I wanted to change those settings, I would do edit this meeting um, and then only this meeting. And this is where you can hit that um, reoccurring meeting or um, if that's not selected. And then also down here, um, breakout rooms pre-assigned, all of these kinds of settings here. This is also once you save, and I don't know why it didn't work today. These are where you add those polling questions. And this comes up and you save that polling question there. And then it should, and then when you hit your polling button on your computer, those saved questions will come up for you to scroll through. Okay. So just wanted to show those things. Let's Erica, this is Anne. Yes. How did, how did you get to the settings? What did you, what did you click on to get to those settings? Sure. So let me, So these settings are within, so if I go here and I schedule a new meeting, those settings for this specific meeting will be down here if I'm on that web setting. If I'm just coming from the app, the, the app, we don't see as many settings if we're scheduling it from the app that's on our computer. Does that make that's sense? Only, that's only because you're the host, right? Um, Right. Well, no, the, this is just me logging into Zoom from, from the web, not the app. So these settings here, yeah, and, and these will be because I'm the host, I will be able to indicate these. That's correct. Students won't. So yes, just go here and go meetings. And then other settings, just general settings will be over here under your general settings. And those do remain the same unless you change these general settings here. Are we clear on that? Thank no. you. I know there's a lot to it. Somebody else has a question? Yeah, uh, I have a question. So it says that you created a meeting, uh, a Zoom meeting. Do we have to do this for every, let's say, for the classroom, uh, for the class? Do we have to create um, a Zoom um, for this, sure. this kind of? Sure. It, it will matter if you do a reoccurring. If you do a reoccurring, okay. it'll be the same link every time. If it's not, it'll be a separate, unique link every time. Does that help? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay. So those were kind of settings as buttons. Again, for security purposes, you may want to do different different things there. Um, okay. And then I like to show people this when you were renaming yourself, if you did not see it before. Um, this here is, oh, sorry. What? This here um, is that participant panel, and I did have a picture of it. And these are the go faster, go slower. These are the reactions here. Give everybody a second. And these are where all participants would be listed. And then here is where I said you do this drop down. And me as the host, I can make somebody a co host. I can rename myself. I can put that person in a waiting room. So if for some reason I'm just tired, I'm not, I don't want to reject them or remove them or report them, I may want to put them in a waiting room. Maybe people are coming to your office hours and for some reason more people than you expected came and you want to put somebody into a waiting room. These are those options that when you're the host, you will see. Okay. Um, this is where you find that participant button and that's what comes up over here. These are those reactions. This is the breakout room button. You probably don't have that on yours right now because you're not the host. Um, that, that will be there when you become the host and you do have to have a license account. So if you don't have a licensed Zoom account through TTU, um, you can email me after this and I can connect you to the person that, that you, that you need that. Also though, some people found that they did have a licensed account after the last one. They just didn't have it indicated to show up on their settings. So check your settings first. I like to show this perspective here, just one second. I would like to show this perspective right here so people can see the difference between an iPad or iPhone view versus a desktop view because your students may be looking at this differently. As you can see here, these names will be all different things. This is me having my different devices to come in and trying to see what they looked like and taking screenshots. So here, they may have to click that participant button here or this more button here. Um, this is what you, you probably are seeing here. It's also important to note that if they're joining from an iPhone or an iPad, they will only be able to have one screen up at a time. So um, you just want to make sure that you realize that um, you, can't, you can't see everybody's face and have a document up on an iPhone or an iPad. It just can have one thing at a time. Okay, I know that we had a question. Uh, yeah, sorry, I joined late, so probably you showed it before. You mentioned licensed Zoom account. Uh -huh. uh, as a TTU employee, where do we find that? 
you just need to email me after this okay, and I will that. make sure you get that. Yep. Thank you. Okay, as we're kind of moving in, I want us to have time to get into those those um, rooms. I wanted to talk about a couple of things. Um, the chat panel, when you're in the breakout rooms, that's not going to work for you to chat to me. You can chat to other people within your group, but you can't chat to everyone, okay? And the only thing I can use when you're in there is the broadcast. And it goes up and it's up for a moment and, and students can see a quick message. We found yesterday they can't see a very long message and it doesn't stay up there very long. It also doesn't timestamp it. So once I put that up there, it's away and I can't see when I sent that to you. So don't count on that to keep your time because I've made that mistake before. And we're going to play with that and you'll get to see that when we're in the session here in just a second. Um, I also like for people to know that I, you may have been using the chat right now, and that's great, but I um, don't, I can't do two things at once. Some people are really good at it. So I ignore the chat when I'm presenting, and um, I tell people that, and if there is a pressing question in the chat, um, let's see, I'm going to see, Curtis, would you mind getting my attention if there's a really pressing chat question? Um, and just raise your hand and chime in. I usually designate somebody. You can designate a student to do that as well. I have a really hard time going back and forth to both, but I will answer those questions. If, if we don't get to them, feel free to email me or I'll email you with an answer. Okay, and then here again is what you would see under the iPad or um, iPhone. That more is where they get that clap or thumbs up. That's where they would access that chat. Um, meeting settings, virtual backgrounds, again, you can disable those before you start a meeting if you don't want your students to put those up. And then again, how that becomes oriented. And then this here, that's how I can chat to either everyone or I can select people to chat with individually. So maybe um, they're doing small group work and you see somebody's not participating, you know, or seems really lost. I could then, you know, take a moment and say, Hey, Curtis, I, you don't seem like you're with me anymore. And that would just go to him. I could designate who that goes to, something like that. Okay. Okay, let's see here. Can you, can you select that? If you, if you disable the ability of the students to chat one-on-one, -on -one, as the mm -hmm. host, can you still send a message to just one student? I believe so. Yes, I believe so. I think that that is always uh, up to, to you to be able to do that. Okay, let's see. Okay, so there's three ways to assign people into rooms. So we're gonna get into that. Before today, I only ever talked about automatic and manual assignment. Today, it worked for me, so we will see. If you registered for this, I was able to go ahead and put people in a pre-assigned. So I'm gonna talk briefly about how I did that, and we'll see if it works today. It has not worked for me in the past, but I understand that for large classes, this is what you're gonna wanna use. And so I'm gonna attempt it today and see if it works, okay? So just bear with me. It hasn't ever worked in the past, but somebody in my last uh, session said that it worked for them now, so I'm gonna try it. So if you're wanting to pre-create those groups and pre-assign people to groups, what you're going to do is you're going to go in and when you're setting up this meeting you're going to click this breakout room pre-assign i'd always done this before and never had a problem and then you can either create those rooms um, right there and have those what i would suggest and what i did today is i said import csv and so when i clicked that you get a box that gives you a template and i'll actually show you that right now because i thought i had put that on there So if we, oh can, yes, go ahead. I'm so, I'm so sorry to interrupt you. A question with, um, as, as we're looking at this, and, and is it showing the options of, of how you're doing that? Again, just mm -hmm. to clarify, it, is that only available to us via uh, online versus the app itself? Like the, the pre-assigning? Yes, you, you would have to go into online, the web browser to do this one here. Okay, so, yes. great, sorry about that. No problem, that's a great question. Um, let me go back here, and this is our test. So right here, do you see it has create the rooms or import? So when you click this, right up here, it says download the template. So you're gonna click to download that template, okay? And I would use this template that they give you here because again, this has always been very finicky for me. <laughs> um, and and we're, we're just trying it today. So once you get that, then what I did, is it looks like, 
it looks like this. They have these rooms this way and they have these test emails. So I tried this today and I covered up y'all's email addresses, but I made several rooms and there's y'all's email addresses over there, the people that were pre-registered. I'm still gonna have to assign some people because not everybody registered and that's okay. And that it gives you the option to do that, okay? So um, once you do this, my computer, I'm a Mac user. And so my computer brought it up as a numbers. It, or it will bring it up as an Excel file. What you have to do is save it as a CSV file, and that is not the default on either one. So on a Mac, you want to export to CSV. On an Excel, you want to click down to CSV, okay, and save it that way. And then you're going to upload it where, where it was before, back in that same area that we were. I'm going to show you. Just because I know this is really technical, and, and I apologize. So then you're back here and you're going to browse and then I have that CSV file from, from y'all's and I even saved it as CSV breakout rooms just so that I knew. And then that and then it went ahead and you see it populated those rooms here and it populated this here. And you can go here to groups and you could rename those there if you wanted to. I didn't want to mess with their format, so I kept it there because I was, it's been so finicky. And then you could add people here. This is the problem though, just so everybody knows, and we're going to see if it works here in just a second. The problem is if you don't know how they're coming to the meeting, what email address they're using, it doesn't matter how you put them in because they may be coming to this Zoom meeting logged in under somebody else's account. So this has always been my catch. So today I'm trying it, but some of you may have your Zoom account linked to a Gmail. And so, but you registered under your TTU. So that's the problem. You're gonna wanna specify with your students when they create an account to use their TTU email and to come in through the app and all those things. That's been my rub in the past and that's why I usually don't show people this because it has the potential to not work at all because we don't always know where students are coming in from. So um, I just wanted to be clear about that because again, today we're going to try it and we uploaded that CVS file and then we're going to, now I'm going to kind of walk you through what I'm going to do next and we're going to try it and see if it works. I'm going to click on this breakout rooms button next and I have to show you in a PowerPoint because it won't let me show you the Zoom right now. And then if we were automatically assigning, this would come up. But since I already pre-assigned those, that, that, that graph that came up before and that other one's gonna come up and I'm gonna say open all of the rooms. It's gonna still look something like this. So then it'll, it'll look something like this. And everybody who's unassigned will remain up here. So anybody who didn't get put in a group before, and then I just go by and I assign them to a room. Um, these are the settings. So if you click down here at the bottom, you'll see options and it'll say move all participants into breakout rooms automatically. We're going to try it both ways today, but at first I'm going to keep that unclicked. Today, the first time it's going to, a box is going to pop up and it's going to tell you join the room and then you'll join the room. Um, the next time we go into breakout rooms, I'll just have you all go in there automatically and quickly. And then allow, oh, sorry, allow participants to um, return to the main session at any time. I always keep that there somebody needs to hang back and ask me a question, if somebody wants to come back to the room to talk to me, I'm fine with that. And then I always have, um, I put 30 minutes, you can put that longer. And then I always give people, that says 10 seconds, I always give them 60 seconds when I close those rooms and then they get a pop-up. And you'll see that here in a minute that says the room will be closing in 60 seconds and then it starts counting down. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna send you to a room, and this is how you assign people. Once you click assign, then it's gonna show people's names. Those unassigned people are gonna come up like this, and I just have to tab them. Once I go down here and I click assign here, the people I've already assigned in this first one will not show up here. So that is helpful if you have a big group. This is also when I was telling you to name yourself something else. If you already knew, if you were letting students opt in to what group they were gonna be in for that day, if they put that number above, in front of their name, you could quickly then find that number and put them, assign them there. You could go through that list and assign them. Is this clear? Any questions before we go into a room? I know I threw a lot at you. I came in late. I apologize. I got the wrong link. Um, okay. I didn't assign myself a number. I don't know if I was. No, that's okay. 
And y'all, just so you know, so I am looking at this right now, and I'm looking at the rooms, and it does not look like when those rooms come up, I'm still not getting people assigned to those rooms. So using that CVS did not work for me. Um, so if you are able to, okay, recover the pre-assigned rooms. Let's see. Yes. Okay. That allowed me to do that with a few people. I had this recreate, and it said, recreate all rooms, recover pre-assigned rooms. So I tried that. Now I'm gonna assign other people to rooms. And all I'm doing right now is clicking people. I'm not going off your numbers. I'm just um, clicking people into rooms at random. And a few people were placed in a room. This does take a minute if you have to assign people but I did wanna see if that worked. And when you go in your room today, this first time, what I would like you to do is just take a minute and look around the room, maybe introduce yourself to each other, see what kind of buttons there are there. There will be things like um, ask, for help and you can you can click that and you'll see what happens that will send me a message saying that um that you need help and i will either come to you or i'll say i'll ignore you and if i ignore you it says that i'm busy helping somebody else so just take a minute i'm going to leave you in there for like two minutes and then i'm going to bring you back out so it's just going into a room i do want to say before you go it is gonna feel like the computer is breaking on you. This is something the first few times I did it that I was a little scared because it does look like everything is shutting down. And I just don't want you to be scared of that. You'll get something like this if you're on an iPad or something like this where it looks like you're closing out of the program. You are not closing out of the program, okay? You're gonna get this where it says, host invited you to join your room. You're gonna click join. You're gonna go in that room, look around see how the chat works, see how all of those things work. I'll broadcast something out so everybody gets a chance to see what that looks like, okay? I'm gonna open those rooms now and I'll see you all back in a little bit. Coming back now. Everybody get a feel for that one time, I know. Um, that was me, you know, kind of manually assigning you, trying to use that pre-assignment. Um, I'm gonna show you some things on the automatic and then I'm gonna send you back to the room again. And I only got a couple of people asking for help. So this next time, um, if you'll ask for help, I'll actually pop in a few rooms. I know that people in the past have said that it's a little invasive sometimes for somebody just to pop into a room. So I'll let you kind of see how that feels. And I'll give you more time in the room next time so that I can make it around to each room. Um, did anybody have any questions about that? Or did it feel? I have a question sure. about the broadcast. Uh -huh. um, I mean, I don't see that. Obviously, I don't see it because I'm not the host. But what does that look like on on your? Sure, end? I can show you here in just a second. I'm, I've got a slide for it, so I can definitely show you that. Let me get to it. So right here, this is where I said two. Like this is where you can say. So you say broadcast the message to all. Two minutes left, and then you have to hit broadcast. So I tried to do it a few times while y'all were in there. I yeah. probably could have thought of something better to say, but just so you could see that, did that, was everybody able to see the broadcast? Maybe people could um, give a thumbs up if they saw it with their emoji, just to, awesome, or, or just an emoji, or just a thumbs up, it's great too. Okay, and I just wanna take a minute to show you these other ways as well. We'll do this one in a second, this is automatic. And what I like about this one is it's a fast way to do it. Instead of having to sit there and click everybody, the breakout rooms come up and it says assign four participants into two rooms automatically, two participants per room. I like this part, the two participants per room because I like to know what, how big my groups are. I like to keep my groups around five usually. And so if I need to create another room, all I'm gonna do is up click that to create another room and then it'll disperse those people randomly there. Does that make sense? So that's the automatic, this is the easiest one. This is what I would recommend if you have large classes and you're just wanting people to kind of do a think pair share or jump into a room and do something. This is what I, this is the one I would use. 
And again, we talked about these settings and what I would recommend is that you click things. If there are things to click, click them and see what's there because that's where I've discovered a lot of things. I do think that it's important here, you can rename, the, this is up here, breakout room one, you can rename that room name. You can delete this room. And then if you decide you wanna exchange somebody to this other room or move, maybe you wanna move iPhone into room five, you can move them that way. So there's a lot of different things. You click a sign and that's when that list comes up of different people. This is what the rooms look like if you were just to open a room, open up those rooms um, and start naming them before people are in the session. Sometimes I do this, I get in a little early and maybe I wanna name those something else. And then again, this is how you manually, you get that pop up and you click the people you want in whichever one, if you're manually assigning them, not automatically. And then again, here you see how, how that looks on your end. And then down here is what, here's how you would add a room. So when we're in the session, I can just hit recreate and y'all will go back to the exact same rooms you were in. Those are already assigned or I can, let's see if I have it on this next one, or I can say, um, recreate all rooms or you know use use the open all those rooms again where everybody's assigned and that's where the that people will go um here again is another as a closer up perspective of what that looks like with the rooms and clicking and you can see down here once all of these people these four these four and this one you can see that my list gets smaller right i just have th three people to choose from there yes nathan Oh, unmute yourself. There. Um, okay. What's the difference between exchange and move to? Let me see. One second. Sorry, I just don't want to tell you wrong. Okay. So right now I'm going to exchange. Okay. So when I click exchange, my whole list of all my rooms comes up. So if one of my rooms is too big, so right now I just clicked on Stacy in group two that was already assigned. And I, I can't show you this because it's what we're currently doing. But okay. if I click on hers, I can now move her. I can exchange her with somebody in a different group. And I, all I have to do is select that person and it exchanges them. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's see here. We talked about broadcast. We talked about practicing. So this is the ask for help um, that you saw. This, I believe, is an iPad perspective. So you can say ask for help and invite the host. And a couple of people did that. And then on my end, I get student two and breakout room one is asking for your help. And student two was the name I put in. It would say Linda. It would say Kurt. It would say something. Jody. Is that, is, I can either join that breakout room when they ask me for help or I hit later and a few of you saw that um, and it said the host is currently helping others try again later okay so I just want you to see that perspective of what they're getting so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you back into a room and what I want you to do is talk you know introduce yourself talk for a little bit click on that I'm going to pop in maybe talk about how you plan on using breakout rooms or what questions you still have um, and then when we come back, each group I'll ask, what questions do you still have? And you, if, you'll, if you'll designate somebody as the reporter or sharing out, then, then that person in each group can, um, can um, share, share their um, questions. I saw a hand go up. So if you have a question, please feel free to ask me that. I thought I saw somebody raise their hand. Um, I'm so, I I missed when you were showing where the break uh, where the broadcast uh, mm -hmm. button is. Can you show that sure. again, just because? Sure, I'm happy to. Okay. So broadcast is going to be right here in your breakout rooms in progress panel that will come up when you're the host. And right down here, broadcast a message to all, and then you write something okay. in this text box, Ooh. and then you hit broadcast. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I am going to recreate our rooms. Recreate all rooms. And so right now it says assign 27 participants into one room. Nope, don't want to do that. I want to create 27 participants into, it says six rooms, four to five participants per room. And this time on the options, I'm going to move you there automatically. 
So you don't necessarily have to click it. It's just going to pull you into that room. And again, this is, makes it a little bit faster if you want people to go quickly. So when you see that one minute marker come up in your room, be sure that you know who's asking your questions when you come back to the main room. Okay. So here we go. I'm opening all the rooms. See you in a bit. Back. Thank you. I do that to myself sometimes. Okay, I'm gonna let everybody get back. I don't know why this keeps doing this. Okay, I'm gonna share this with you real quick just so y'all know what I was doing on my end and then we'll see if we can get a few questions. Let me make sure everybody's back. Okay, let's double check. Everybody's made it back. Okay, so I'm gonna just show you real quick how I jump from room to room, just in case you were curious on my end what that looked like. And what I did is I clicked right here, this panel, this pop-out panel, I clicked join. And then it would say, do you wanna join room one or group one? And I would say yes. And then when I was in that room, I, I would go and join another room. So that's kind of, and it, it, it feels a little clunky. It does look like it's closing down every time when I'm skipping from room to room. Um, I think you've got to feel for how it can be kind of disruptive um, for people to jump in, but um, there isn't a way to like warn them you're coming in or anything like that that I have found. Um, what questions do we have? We can go group by group, I guess. Um, and see, I think I made it around to all of the groups. Um, what if we start with group one? Did y'all have any questions that came up? Anything you wanted to ask? What are the group numbers? I don't remember seeing a, that our group Oh, that's okay. They were just, well, let's just go with one of the groups. How about one of the groups? I'll, I'll ask that? my question. Um, okay. Our, our, our question, and it was about uh putting putting uh students into these groups so for example i set up my my reoccurring meeting mm -hmm. and i assign students to different groups before let's say before class starts do those do i have to put those names in there every single time or does it carry over because it's a reoccurring meeting the way that I understand it is if you're able to get the CSV file to work for you and it's established with that reoccurring meeting, that will be there every time okay. is my understanding. Okay. But again, I haven't had very much luck with it. I mean, it kind of worked today, but not like I would want it to if I had 300 students waiting on me. So in that case, the best way to do it would be the auto assign. I think so, especially if they knew, like my students always in my class always get a number associated with them. It helps me get things back to them quicker, so I file it. So I may would put people, I would say you're group number five all semester. You're always going to be five. When you come in, I want you to rename yourself five in your name, um, which I make my students in a live classroom do a nameplate. So this is kind of the same idea here is I'm I'm needing a way to group you quickly. And so I wanna know your name and your group so that when we move into these, it'll it'll happen. And then what happens is if it's reoccurring, I believe if it's reoccurring, when we come back, if we all log in the same way, I can say just recreate past rooms because I believe that stays with this meeting then. Okay. So once you do it the first time, it would be established. I'm not gonna bet my life on that, but I, that's in theory how it should work. Okay, thank you. Yes, Angela? If you, I have an opposite perspective. I like to mix my groups up even multiple times during class. Sure. If, if you put in a certain, if, it know, if you have a certain enrollment in class and then you mm -hmm. do manually, or excuse me, automatically, is that a randomized process so it'll put, it'll mix the students up each time? The way that I understand it is if, because that's what I did last time, if I go now to the, my panel and I say recreate and I recreate all rooms and I say, it's saying three rooms now, but if I go back to seven um, and I recreate rooms, 
it looks like it's keeping you all the same to me. So you may want to just go through and exchange a few people, if that makes sense. Well, um, the option, the option was not, there wasn't a random option. There was an, uh, an automatic. Yes. But and is, that's my is thing. that an option without <laughs> recreating what you had before? So right now it's trying to, when I do automatic again, and I do my rooms up to seven, it's putting everybody back in those same rooms. Does All that right. make sense? Yes. Since you have it as the host, can you can you take your number in how many ever groups you did the first time? Can you pick another number of groups? Because that's, that's going to force now. that's going to force the system right. to do something. Right. So now I did four groups, and yeah, it mixed people up now. Right. So they're bigger groups. They're groups of seven now. So yeah, that would be one way around it. Sure. What other questions do we have? And it doesn't have to be based on groups. If you have a question, you can just ask it. Uh, I have a question regarding the video recording. So okay. if we use the breakout rooms, will the video recording record all each room separately or no, how, how it does, does it work? It does not follow you around and it does not record a room. If one day when I recorded myself last time, it's actually recording me the whole time. And what I didn't realize last time is I was recording it to put it up and I thought that I messed something up and I said something out loud and I was scared. I wasn't in a room. I wasn't with any students. And when I went back and watched the recording, I could hear that. So I thought, oh my gosh, if I would have taken a call, it would have recorded that. So that's important to note that it's recording you. Unless you're muted, then it's not. It, it's, it's got you muted. But so like when I'm going to post this, because it's being recorded, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to cut out all the time you're in the breakout room. Because if not, you're just going to see a black room if I'm not in the main room or me. Does that make sense? So it doesn't work great recording if you're doing breakout rooms, if you're wanting to record each room. It, it's not a great tool for that. What other questions do we have? Yes. Is there a way to record uh, people participation? Let's say if there's a question I want to know. Yes. Yes. So um, I'm actually going to show you that and I'm going to send a link to the directions for it. Um, one second, let me pull this up. There is a way for you to get an attendance report so you would know who's here and who's not. And it looks as if there is a way for you to get the polling information as well. But I haven't again had luck doing that, but I will show you where to find those reports. So this is really helpful if you have a really large class. So again, you're going to be on the web and you're going to go to reports over here on these settings. And see, this one says usage, and this one says meetings, and this is a polling report. I haven't gotten this one to work, but here, usage, and then if you will go to whatever meeting it was, so like yesterday, this was um, our meeting yesterday, and you can see that there were 46 participants. And right here, you can see the time I joined, the time I left, and how long I was on for. And you can export this, into a PDF or into a, I believe you can export it as a Excel file. And so you can see who was here and how long. The only thing that's important to note is when you do breakout rooms, like we did yesterday, people are on here multiple times and it messes up their time. So I know Suzanne, I know that I was there for 53 minutes, but it also has me here as 37 minutes and it has Suzanne here for 86 minutes. So know that those those look funny when you go in breakout rooms. It's 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 making a duplicate of the report in some way. But if you're just doing a, a live class, you can definitely find that. Was was that your question? Not necessarily about the time, but let's say if I have a quiz, right, or if I have a clicker kind of question and I want them to respond with the answer A or B, and I want to know how many of students are answered A and how many students answered B. Is it so the poll usually does tell you that. I don't know. So here, oh, it came through. It just was lagging. So earlier when I did this poll, just now, when I tried uh -huh. to bring it up again, so I can show you this now. I so 58% uh, uh, said yes, 42% um, said no. So these polling questions do that, and that's nice. If you And you don't have to share it. So just then when I pulled this up, it said share or not share. Mm -hmm. But I don't believe you're going to know who answered what here. 
Yeah, but Does this is also good to, to give me an idea of whether they understand in general or not, if this is just Sure, good. sure. I think that's okay. a great way to do a check-in. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Erica, to run those reports, do you have to have an upgraded account or is that available for a basic account? I don't know because I do have a licensed account. It would just be a matter of going in and seeing if it was listed there on a basic account. Okay, but if you okay. don't, if, if you don't have a licensed account, if you're with PTU, I know last time I had some people with TTU and then HSC. Um, if you're with PTU, I can connect you to get a, an account. You just have to. Okay, that. that would be great. The department was supposed to, but I'm a little bit nervous they're not going to have it done by the time classes sure. start. So sure. that would be if great. Thank you. Last time I gave this workshop when I got off, I had 11 emails about those, and I was oh. able to get <laughs> think all of those people licensed. My understanding is they do have those licenses still, and so I'm still is I want to help people teach well, so I will get those to you if I can. We just need to send you a quick email, just as a reminder. Yeah, just send me an email and say I would like a license, and then I connect you with my IT connect person, and they put you on a licensed account. I know we're getting Great, close to, to time, and I don't I want to be uh, make sure that people know that they can leave <laughs> if they need to go on to another meeting. Uh, if you have a question that I haven't answered, you can stay and ask me that question. I saw a hand up, or you can email me. I try to get back to you, um, but I'm going to keep taking questions until people, um, and, and, and you're not going to send me at all if you just need to leave, okay? Yes. Sergio? Yeah. I have two. The first okay. is when, when you do screen shares, uh, uh -huh. and I had noticed that before in Zoom meetings, but when you do screen shares, something in my computer gets haywire and it sends me back to the desktop. Do you have that happening and do you have to remind students to go back and get in and, and go into the Zoom? because when you're sharing a, a screen, sometimes you, you think you're seeing this, this you know, yes. this screen. So I think that's a great thing. And I probably should incorporate that into my practice when I'm sharing my screen to make sure people can see it. Um, because you're right. Today, I was, I've had some issues before. I don't like, and I figured out the, the trick to this today. I don't like usually when I share my PowerPoint, it will be in presenter mode and it'll be really huge and I can't see my people. I found, and so I've been saving my thing as a PDF and just sharing my slides that way. But just today I tried a new one, but I think it was progressing on its own a few times. So it was a little annoying, but I found how to set it up in PowerPoint where it doesn't take up your whole screen. So I could still see you and what I was sharing. And so, but I do think it's important to check because I've been, because it lags sometimes and I've been bebopping along helping people with stuff and they're like, I can't see what you're talking about. So those first few times for you to realize how long it lags, I think that would be great to ask people if they're seeing it. And my other question is, do you have a camera on or camera off or camera on when you're asking questions or interacting? policy in, in your class? I do. So if I'm giving a live class, I'm going to expect for their cameras to be on unless they've contacted me and told me why it couldn't be. Of course, okay. people have a lot of different reasons why they may not want a camera on or they may have something else going on. And I would, would want to know about that. I'm not going to say like have it on no matter what. But what I tell people is if I'm in a meeting and my camera is off, it means I'm distracted. And so it means I'm doing something else and there's a reason why I'm not there. And my expectation in class is if we're going to be having a synchronous class that you're here and I can see you unless you've told me otherwise. Okay. Okay. Brendan, did you have a question? I did. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think I was talking with my, my colleagues in, in our breakout room on this one. Um, I really like the idea uh, that you said that you do the 60 second countdown, especially if, if a, you know, let's say you're doing a problem set and you have to report back because 10 seconds, it's kind of like, oh, oop, oop, and then you're done, right? And then you show up, you're like, what are you talking about? Like, I don't know. Um, and I'm trying to, I'm looking on the, the web settings right now, trying to figure out where that was. Is that simply when you create the breakout room? Is that yeah. where you set it? If, if so you that's, un that. that's under those options right there. Right now, I can... I can set countdown time and it has an up and down arrow. Okay. So when you hit that breakout room um, button, a big box is going to come up and on the bottom um, left corner, you'll see options and that's okay. where you find that. Okay. And then, so whenever you then decide you've jumped around the different groups, you feel everyone's at, at a good spot. 
it, you hit mm -hmm. it and then 60 seconds from then it, it brings people back. Yes. And I will say the first few times that I've done it, it feels very chaotic and kind of scary and a little. And so I say try to practice it with something low stakes on that first, on the, just to get the pattern set up because it does feel weird. So let's go into a breakout room and try the ask me for help button. And I think you have to spend that time orienting them to these things because students could be on multiple platforms. So make sure that they know what your expectations are and how to use the things within whatever platform you're using. Okay, okay. No, that makes sense. Um, and then another question is kind of a, a silly one. Um, where, where do you register for the next couple of workshops? I just have the URLs, so I just like click on them and, and jump in. That's, that's do you fine. Need, do you need to register? Uh, no, um, you don't have to. That's fine too, but it is on our registration page. Uh, okay. Um, on the TLPDC registration page, awesome. you can you can go there. I meant to share this before people left. Oh, hold on. Oh, hold on. Let me send it to everyone. I'm just going to share a few websites and awesome. a few things um, that you may, and then my email address for people. And I'm sorry I didn't share that earlier. This breakout rooms here session, right up, it's a lot of what we talked about today. One thing I didn't say earlier that I'm thinking about now is you are going to want to have a back channel set up with your students. So that if you're meeting in Zoom, you don't tell them, well, tell me your problem when you get there. Either that's email or Skype for business or something. In case they're having trouble accessing this meeting in some way, you want to have that back channel always set up of how else they should be able to contact you. So in my classes, I would say the expectation is you're there. And if you're not there, you've emailed me why you're not there if you're having trouble as soon as that, as soon as that problem comes up. None of this, I tried to get in and I just couldn't. You know, my expectation is, you're not here, I know why you're not here. If, if I have a smaller class, right? I don't need to know that for everybody in a huge class. But, but if they're having trouble accessing something, I want them to email me or use Skype for Business and I'm giving them those other options. Okay. Erica, I have a question for you. Um, sure. I found your screenshots very helpful comparing different devices. Uh, uh -huh. Do you have a clean version that we can share with students, or is that that one should it should be on the breakout rooms in Zoom? I believe that I share the okay. different perspectives there. If it if it's not there, I can always also just send you because okay. I, I I have set up I've tried to, to incorporate PDFs throughout that where you can kind of see what I'm talking about, and um, that was an important one for me of what does it look like for them? Because one time I was meeting with a student and they were like, I don't have that on mine. And I was like, well, I think you do, but I didn't know how to tell them where to look. And so then I just had to like, let that go, you know? Thank you. Okay. Well, I think that's it unless there's other questions. Um, let's see if there's any chat questions. Uh, thank you all very much for being here today. And if, if you hit a problem or you want to practice this or you're not sure, I'm happy to meet with you. That's my job to help you get ready to teach. And um, even, there are no dumb questions and it's okay to be a little afraid of it, but you can't break it. I promise. I hope y'all have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, sure. thank y'all. I want to make sure y'all have any questions.